Come on, Rangers! 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 Two and a half weeks after the cancellation of the season, Dorking are back for another friendly. And while the National League South season is over, Mark and his fellow chairman are looking at options to create a replacement competition for the clubs who wish to continue playing. Listen, we, we've all come up with a format that we've put forward. And I suppose all we're asking as the teams that do want to carry on playing football is for those that don't want to support us in the same way that we supported them. Midway through the vote, two weeks in, clubs were starting to think, oh, hold on a minute, we, we, we can field a team. Maystone had, had rebuilt a new team, Tunbridge, Steve's um, here today, they, uh, they had built a new team. The timing of the vote kind of forced clubs into, you know, a, a black and white answer. Whilst I really do feel the pain of step three and below, and the null and voiding, um, et cetera, you know, this was a level intended to carry on. Uh, that was the status of it. Um, and only the funding distribution um, or funding confusion was what, you know, had this, uh, caused this issue. I, I mean, I, I've rarely seen a group of people that normally are so far apart come together so quickly and come up with something that's innovative, it's out of the box. And, and I think that's, what they have got to understand. The injury to Slav Huck has led to Mark recruiting Jack Turner as a standing goalkeeper, which provides another challenge for Sam Howes, who is keen to make the number one spot his own. I'll be honest, because I've, I've been, say, obviously through the academy system a few times, um, obviously from the youngster, people was always coming in and out, was always having to compete for my place, and that won't ever change. Like, for me personally, people are going to come in. Doesn't matter what position you play in, goalkeeper or centre forward, there's always going to be someone knocking at the door to take your, take your slot. But obviously, the negative for me is that only one person can play in goal. Um, but for me, like it's coming in, I've just got to improve myself and obviously be better and show that I'm better than them who are coming in through the door. I am actually my worst critic, so everyone will tell you. Like, to be fair, my family and all that, friends, uh, friends girlfriend as well, honestly. I'll sit there and I'll just I'll mope if I do something wrong. It'll be like, even if we won like today or something and one pass wasn't right, then I'll probably be a bit like, what, what can I do there? Um, but I think that's, that's just my nature. That's like the way I've always done it since a youngster. Sam, when you just kicked the ball to that bloke, what went through your head for that split second? Did you, did, did you think at any point you'd play again? <laughs> no, I'm serious. If that had scored, that would have been your last ever game. I swear to God, I'm not even mucking about. Career ended. <laughs> I'm joking, Sam. Don't quit. What's it like you to be on the other end of that? I think it can be hard. I'm going to be wrong. It can be hard, obviously, to get the stick, but he's doing it to, in my opinion, to improve us. And I don't think his improvement as well as, obviously, his players, but as people. Like, since, obviously, being here, I think he's toughened me up, if I'm honest. Um, and I can, obviously, I am thankful for that. Sometimes you obviously don't want to hear the stuff that comes out. Like, any player wouldn't want to hear it. They always want to hear the positives. But to hear those kind of constructive criticisms, um, I think are massive for me as a young goalkeeper to develop. Someone thinks of BO, by the way. Whoever that is, fucking sort it out. Fucking stinks. Say what you see, boys. Do you know what I mean? Got to be you, George, isn't it? Got to be you. <laughs> you know what I'm looking for today? Like, really, really good application. That's the main thing, please, OK? I don't need to say too much. You know, we just need to save it every fucking minute we play. Now, we could be playing by next Saturday, or the Tuesday, rather. So we could be all on, back to normal. So, you know, let's just be very professional about our business today. Have a good game today, boys, OK? Sam, you're going first half, OK? It'd be no exaggeration to say that I were doing 16-hour days every day three Zoom calls a day with chairman, owners, uh, you know, lawyers, football representatives, you know, to try and get us a game of football and restart the competition. And then, you've, and then at the other end of the scale, you've got a player who can't say man on. You know, like, so, right, so that's not, that's not going to go too far with me. They're supporting the National League to try and get a competition, but in reality, um, 
the first one shouldn't have closed down in the first place, so I'm not going to feel grateful, you know. Mm. The fallback isn't catastrophic, really. Um, I think we've come to, I've come to <laughs> live with that in my mind, you know. If we have to be at the, the, the bore end of a bad decision in terms of the National League taking the view they did, then we might have to bury that one and move on. As much as the friendlies are a welcome break from the lockdown monotony for all of the volunteers, the next two weren't, in of themselves, particularly interesting. Jason Price pinpoints finish and Jake Gallagher's world-famous pirouette were the only highlights to come from the Eastbourne game. Nicky, up you go, tuck in, up you go. What's he done there? What's he done there? What did he do there then? He's just done a completely on his own pirouette for no reason. He's run along and he went, is it carrying on? Yeah. What's he done there then, Dino? A midweek friendly against League Two's Crawley Town provided some other interesting moments. Alfie Rutherford's header opened the scoring and Jimmy Mewitt's drive into the top corner would be a goal of the season contender had it been a league game. Dorking are putting in the performances their manager expects from his side, although they still don't know if they'll kick a ball competitively again this season. For Mark, the next 24 hours are crucial, as the FA are about to decide whether or not the newly proposed league formats will be accepted or rejected. Are you excited right now about the next 24 hours trepidation? What is it? What goes through your head when you don't know what's coming? I've managed to block it out a little bit, to be fair. Yeah, I think, I think um, it's trepidation, yeah, there's no excitement there. I think it, the amount of ups and downs in the last 12 months with COVID and football, you learn to not ever hold your hat on anything, you know. So I think, um, no, for me, I think I'm just, um, we will see. I'm just literally counting down the hours. I'd rather go to bed and wake up when it's over. It's one of those, I just don't want to think about it really. I was actually just on the way to the shops and I got um, a text from the from the gaffer obviously just explaining that that was pretty much it now that you know that was the end of our season after today but yeah I think it, definitely for a few months that'll be that'll be us done now I've got to spend more time with the kids and the missus Tuesdays Thursdays and all day Saturdays it's a big part of your life mm. you know and just to stop that you know isn't going to be great with the proposals being rejected Today's friendly against South End will be the last match of Dorking's now non-existent season. As a result, there is a notable air of tension around Meadowbank. For the majority of the squad are out of contract, and many are wondering if they'll be re-signed. For some, there's an understandable concern that the best opportunity they'll ever have to follow Dorking's path into the fifth tier of English football might well have slipped away. Wheeler's making the most of his last day at the club. Fucking get the gear in, go on Wheeler, son. Get some old trackies, take them with you. <laughs> right, good to see you all. So yesterday was an interesting day. Um, and disappointing, let's be frank about it. We, uh, we weren't a given to win the league. We weren't a given to get promotion. So really, the, on the crime sheet of the National League is that we were denied the opportunity and I think that you know I don't think many people would have backed anybody else beyond us so that's the credit uh, to, to, to us all of us the management team and everybody the one well-known thing about football is that it's basically run by wankers and the governance of football is awful and uh, we have been a real victim of that this year real victim so we're going to take them to the next step anyway um, but that'll be more damages, compensation, etc, etc, as opposed to saying start the league again, because I think that ship ultimately has sailed. And I have to say, genuinely, that, you know, you boys have been, you know, absolutely fucking brilliant. This is a fucking hard task here. It would be impossible to have everybody, every day of the week, doing everything right. 
you lot have rolled with those punches and, and, and you get the praise when it's due as well. And we have fun with it. And I try to teach you how to be fucking what I call men. I'm not afraid to say men, right, in this day and age. But, you know, what I would say is to a man, we had a lot of new players this year. And uh, it takes a bit of getting used to. But those new players now, I know you'll understand why we're successful. Because we're relentless. We're relentless. And, and you are now part of that group. Everybody will have a chat with me in the next 14 days. Everybody. We'll have a chat about where you are, what you want, how it is. Don't start talking about an extra 25 quid, all that bollocks. It's been a pandemic. We've not finished two seasons. We've achieved everything we could have achieved. Top of the league, five points clear. Games in hand, right? We've done everything we could do. And we're in prime position now to kick on. For me, I'm thinking, right, get us to that EFL, right? Let's fucking smash through this wank National League and get to the EFL. And I guarantee if we do, a load of you will be playing if you want, if you can. We're not a given for next season, obviously, but fuck me, they've got some catching up to do these teams. And obviously I'll be calling all of you, except you, Nicky, you're done. Um, yeah. Oh, what's that, yeah. <laughs> so today, um, it's everyone's just gonna enjoy themselves. Um, South End, the objective today is eight goals. That's the objective, okay? Eight. We laugh at Mitch. <laughs> are you thinking? Are you thinking if you was in goal, it'll be eight? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Um, Jamie's come in, I, you know, and I, 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 I love watching Jay play. He's not here stocking fillers. He's here. He wants to play football. He's a fucking amazing footballer. But it's been so good watching all of you learn these roles and play the way we play. Let's make sure we remember our last game of the season being an absolute corker. So enjoy the minutes whilst you're out there and get it moving, okay? All right? Just want to, just want to, this, it's only a quick one, so I just want to say a quick uh, and a really big thanks to everybody for their help. I think off the field we've been exceptional and I said to the players as well earlier that you know you guys really have, have enabled us to play football even this year. So however we've ended up where we are now is really detriment to, to you guys and all the work and effort you put in. I want you to understand how much we appreciate it, yeah? And I said to the boys that we've been denied a chance of success. We weren't guaranteed it. It's a big difference. And, uh, and we just suck that up and we just go again and use it as uh, motivation. That's where it works, yeah? That was all. Cheers, guys. Jimmy, you score at trick, I'll give you this jacket. That's two grand. Oh, you said that before. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm not believing it. Two grand. Hat trick. Take it. <laughs> I can got it from uh, Istanbul. <laughs> right, boys, they're going to run about a lot. They're fucking very, very young and slight. They're going to buzz about big time. There's an end of term vibe on the bench, with Mark looking to tease rather than reprimand his players. <laughs> Watch this, sir. Watch this. Come on, Noel! <laughs> These sort of teams, they've got one phase of playing. Yeah. If they can't do the first bit, they go, right, yeah, fuck it, get up. Literally. Mark's not wrong. South End struggled to get out of their third, and when the play turns over to James McShane, he threads in Jimmy Mewitt. And with Mark promising Mewitt a £2,000 jacket if he scores a hat trick, it's an opening goal that makes Mark more nervous than a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I have to get him off if he gets another one. Oh. Straight off. Don't care, 18th minute off. That's you done. See you, in, see you in July. Mewitt is clearly a man on form. Immediately after scoring, he breaks down the rights before standing the ball up at the far post. Luke Moore eventually tees up Wes Fogden, whose audacious effort beats the goalkeeper, but not the bar. One goal, Jimmy. Jimmy, one goal you got. Keen on the idea of taking the coats from Mark's back, Mewitt puts himself in harm's way. Not that he wants to give Mark an opportunity to take him off. Get Clark Grant, he's remotely fucked, get him off. Diamonds, the only way to play that against us is if you've got the ball. Not with, without the ball, you're fucked. Even with a suicidal diamond formation, Southend managed to find a hole in the Dorkin defence and get themselves level. That's all from floppy stuff like that. Southend, 
Dorking get back on the front foot, and when Southend can't dispossess Wes Fogden in the penalty area, Mark is forced to consider life without his expensive coat. Is he off at half time? Look, Jimmy, look, look, you don't even see that's what he's saying to him. Got a jacket, got a jacket, lad. He hasn't got a fucking, he has not got a fucking dole in him from here. Jim! Jim Ray! Jim Ray! Here we go, here we go! Turn up, turn up! Go on, run it, run it! Run it, go on! When Matt Briggs accelerates down the right hand side, he looks to set Jimmy up for the crucial third goal. Oh, Jim! Oh, Jim! Oh, no, 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 no! No, no, no! We'll have to watch that back, Jim. Fucking sweating here. Well, it is a big coat. Changes for now, for now. Um, so the second half starting lineups. Uh, Baz down for now. Sammy Callum. <coughs> O'Hara. The pushback is in front of him. Jake and Dan. Yeah? Got that? Yeah. Please, please don't hurt kids. <laughs> Just fucking let them enjoy their game. Please. Hey, he's a good player though, let him know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, Jake, fuck I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, no, done. Uh, and the others are done. The others, your fucking season's done. How's that feel? Fuck me. Good, you right? You want to carry on, then? Yeah? I'm sure, yeah? Yeah? Okay. Listen, no, Jay's going to spray the ball. Kane, fucking excellent, mate, by the way. Done what I asked, and obviously got let down by fucking Sideshow Bob and fucking British Touch. Two great balls, yeah? Before sending the players out for the final half of the season, Mark makes them a promise that, while being one of the funniest, most revealing things we've heard him say, we're not allowed to broadcast, for he does have more lawyers than us. Right, Rich, cut that out, mate. <laughs> cut that out. Right, come on, boys. Let's enjoy this last half of the season. Come on, enjoy this, come on. Matt Briggs is certainly enjoying himself on the wing, setting up Jake Gallagher for a goal that didn't count because the linesman incorrectly claimed the ball had gone out. Southend make a rare foray into the Dorking penalty area, but Sam Howes bats the ball away. And Jamie O'Hara rolls back the years in order to set the tempo in midfield. But even the man who once marked Ronaldo out of a game couldn't help but be outshone by the dazzling footwork of Jake Gallagher. Fuck off, Jake! <laughs> Leave off! Youngster James Dixon shows some skill to get into the box and get a shot away, but it's a second half of little note, and Dorking's season ends with a 3-1 win over another League Two side. Cheers, mate. Thank you, mate. Doing well with them, boys. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Steve. Cheers, Lynn. Right. OK, anyone got any feedback from me? No? Good? All good, yeah? Simple as that. So that's us done. Um, I thought so. Uh, you know, today was, it's just not easy to fucking go and play in a match like that. I thought you've conducted yourselves all season brilliantly uh, to a man. Um, you know, I'm really, I've got to say, we've done everything we possibly could fucking do. Similar as that. Management team uh, have been uh, really committed to. These are volunteers in the main. Need to remember that shit. We're on our way back, boys. We're on our way back. I really feel like we're on our way fucking back. You know, we, um, we've had a promotion every two years in the last six. Unbelievable form. No one else has ever done it. You know what I mean? Year in, a, year in the league, promotion next. Year in the league, promotion next, you know. We went playoffs last year in our first ever division at the league. I'm thinking, right, old, old tight. We're at the top. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those. So, you know, no matter what, I'll always think fucking five points clear game in hand. That's how that works. But we won't take that baggage forward. We'll just take the positives and we'll kick on. That's what we'll do. Pre-season, there'll be one in there that's going to be one of the northern lots so we can have a, a, a night out and stuff and have a bit of fun. We haven't done that for a while. Yeah, and we'll get that early on as well, fucking early on, because we need a we need a little fucking blow, yeah? So, well done, boys, and, and the management team as well. Excellent. Cheers, boys. Lovely. Get the kit in. Oh. Right. Have they got me anything, Jukes, and I've ordered anything to players? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's gutted to be in the position we were as a club, um, like five points clear game in hand, and we were just hitting that run of form where it would have took a lot to stop us. Um, but obviously, you're not guaranteed to win it, but it would have been, you know, 
hard to have asked not to, um, the way we were playing. So in that sense, I'm gutted. I'm gutted for obviously the hard work everyone at the club's put in, not even just the players, but backroom staff, coaches, all the training, you know, and obviously the gaffer himself. Like He gives you more shit than anyone, you and Sam. You get more <laughs> shit from Mark than anyone I've ever seen. I I assume it's in a kind of loving way. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I mean, I think maybe if I was a bit younger, I might not, I don't know how I'd feel about it, but no, at my age, I mean, I take it in a good way because um, I do get on with Mark and I, I think he's great. And um, yeah, I know I, I know what way he says it in. And um, uh, a lot of times when he does dig me out when I have done something, I know myself anyway. So um, I don't need anyone to tell me when I have been not, not at my best. So. Um, yeah, I'll take I'll take everything I'll take everything with a pinch of salt. He says, but um, yeah, you all, you can always improve whatever age you are. So if it is in the way that he wants me to play better, it's, it's fine. But um, yeah, no, he, he's all right. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to be in next season. But what's it like for you to not know at this point? Um, yeah, no, of course. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of players um, in that position. I signed the two years. My, I've done two years here now. Um, but um, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, I think we're going to sit down. So I think mate, the main thing was finding out what happened with the league first before we had that chat. Um, but yeah, I'll have a chat. And obviously, yeah, at the moment, I'd love to be at this club. It's, um, I think it's one of the best non-league clubs around, if not the best. So What do you do for a living outside of here? I'm a hairdresser. Yeah, hairdresser. So yeah, it's, um, yeah everyone, a lot of hairdressers in my family. And um, yeah, as soon as I come out of football, it was one of the first trades that I started doing. I just um, used to start doing it for for fun really just doing friends and it just become a thing that fitted around football perfect and I used to do it on my day off and uh yeah and occasionally you get called in to do the gaffers there so <laughs> loves a freebie I was I was wondering if uh, the players would have been tapping you up there. no I do the gaffer does but he pays well so he pays really well his, his barber is one of his <laughs> strengths on the football CV <laughs> Without that, it wouldn't have been good, yeah. to be honest, would you, Nick? Nah, I wouldn't, yeah. Get your head up, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, when we found out yesterday, like, I just put a late night in, obviously, as uh, you know, managing director, if you like, as well. Um, I had a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of staff, volunteers. You know, my mind really went, went to uh, all the people that put a lot of graft in. That's where I take it personally, you know. Um, you know, beyond even the expenditure and the time and effort and stuff like that, you know. Obviously, you'd be hard pushed to think you've not been part of an unjust, poor situation, um, if, you, if you're being honest with anybody. Um, but you have to, as in football, quite a lot, you have to suck it up. Football authorities, it's their way of the highway, um, and they're so autocratic. They, uh, but when it comes to them, having any type of criticism and levered at them, they just go missing. People like me, I've been doing it 21 years, so football governance have been screwed the whole of that time. The best governance in football um, are the volunteers that run leagues, uh, the volunteers that sit on committees. 12 months to the day that we left having played Haven't, um, and it was our last game of last season. And then the National League made the biggest pig's ear ever of trying to organise the playoffs. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it got <laughs> it got so worse, it's unbelievable. You've got a few out of contracts in that. If you've got that all set in your head already, do you know what you're doing? It's, the, it's always the worst part of the job for me because, um, I mean, first of all, I really believe in continuity anyway. That's what it's all about here. I'll change my mind all the time because I, I kind of manage my heart quite a lot. So I might think someone's not quite with us anymore, but maybe they'll, they'll just about get another deal and... But it's that continuity and that togetherness and that changing room that is our success. We see clubs all the time that just sign players. And don't get me wrong, they have to, because they don't have the fortune of being the owner and the manager. Is that an advantage, the fact that you're the manager and owner? Or is, is it a bit of both? Is it, is it sometimes a bit of a pain for you? Huge advantage, massive. Biggest advantage we've got, definitely. Um, as long as, obviously, I surround myself with the, the right team. I've got a brilliant team around me, both on and off the field. Uh, people that make decisions over and above me about how we do things and I just steer the ship really um, and try to keep that model going and it's not built on money you know it's built on genuinely for the people that, that don't read the small print and like to just look outside in and think oh club coming through the ranks and I've heard they've got money and but realistically you look around the, the club the, the number one keeper came here on 20 quid a week in park football 
You know, we've got boys been here nine, ten years. We've got boys in starting lineups on a regular basis, been here three, four, five, six years. We went into Ishmael League football. We, we took two seasons to get through Ryman 1, two seasons to get through the Ishmael Prem. And um, the fact of the matter is, we, we've done one season in the playoffs here and we've gone top. And I thought to myself, blimey, this is, you are really now thinking, this is, um, if we get to the National League, that's phenomenal. And you know, and for all the tea in China, for every time I talk about this season, I forever think we're five points fucking clear, a game in end, right, and we were gonna fucking win it, <laughs> right? And there's no way, there's no way around that. You know, the bottom line is I'll, I'll forget all about it. I'll be abroad and having a vodka and tonic and, and fucking start telling someone, you know, because it's always there, isn't it? You can't get rid of that fact, you know. I mean, what we bring to the party, this level of football, is a passion uh, for success because of where we come from. We're not in it for money. Um, all the management team are volunteers. Um, I'm the biggest volunteer of all. I'm an investor. And um, so if we want to win and, and we get denied it, we're going to be bothered, you know? Fucking hell. Oh, cheers, mate. Dorking Uncovered will return next season. If you'd like to support us and help us to keep making the show and get behind the scenes stuff and directors commentaries and that kind of thing, check us out on patreon.com slash bunch of amateurs.